and snap ring. So we can either try to put it on right now and then have it loose and take it back off and bend it, or we just bend it right now. That's a decision. See pliers here, try them out. Okay, I don't want this clip to be loose on the shaft at all. It has to be tight on the shaft so it doesn't just free spin. Usually when you put them in they expand and they don't come back. See where the holes, see how it's already touching each other? Usually there's a big gap between that after you put it on. That's the bad part. So what you can do is you can bend these things in a little bit. To put a little more tension on them. Usually I do it after, wherever that went to. Where did that go? Oh, it went on the floor. So usually I go, I do them afterwards, but I'll try it beforehand. Now you have to slip them over a little bit so you can bend them down. So see how that's a little bit closer now, a little bit of an overlap. That's why you had to offset a little bit. And you come back over there and do it again on the other side. Now, these are real thin, so if you overdo it, it breaks. We're just kind of like pre-stressing this stuff here. You got pretty good control of these pliers like this. All right, so you can see how they're kind of overlapped a little bit, but not full overlap. You can find a sharp edge and dull edge. Just the sharp edge, so that goes out. So then you get put on top of your pliers, which is hard to do now because some dumbass bent the damn clip. So you have to kind of bend the clip out by hand to hook and put on the titties like that. And you slip it in there and do not overextend it any more than you have to to get it on there. I just got some light in there, which I don't. Okay, after I get on the, then I'll push on the rest of the way with a screwdriver, if need be. Looks like it was already on there all the way. It's nice and snug. So now it's in there nice and tight. And you want to make sure the snap ring is not spaced where the key is at. Of course, I don't know where the key is at. Oh, it doesn't want to rotate for some reason. Oh, the gears are in there. <laughs> now I can rotate by hand. Not sure where I didn't mark the gear where it was at. So you want to make sure this thing is tight on here. Rotate. Here, how tight that's on there. It's on there snug. There we go. I think the keyway was right there also. I think the keyway is right here on top, right where it was. See, it's on. This is on there pretty tight. It doesn't want to slide. And I think the key is right there. We're over here a little ways, so we're good. All right, so that's what you're looking for. Make sure it's on there good and tight. Make sure it's on the groove all the way around over here also. It is on there. This has quite a bit of backlash on it. You don't have that much in there, but it doesn't really hurt anything. Okay. Obviously, I can turn it by hand, which is good. A little tight right there, but it goes through and it's loose again. So that's adequate drag. Don't forget your drive gear. You have one fat tooth there that has to line up with a fat tooth on this one, wherever it is. Fat tooth is down here on the bottom. It goes down at that point. You have to engage that gear. Then it goes down. You can also just turn the crank, does the same thing. 
Okay, then you have a spring with a spacer goes on top of that. On a later bike, they don't have the spring. And then this gear here has to go all the way onto that, and you have to line it up with the big one. It has to go right to there, and it has to go on. Now, I don't want to beat that on because it'll, like it'll, uh, uh, it'll warp the crank. So I'm going to try heating it up and pushing it on. Hopefully, it goes on one shot. We'll find out. I'm not doing that today, though. It's getting late. It's been a long day. Okay, so that is all on there right now. Obviously, it turns nice and free. Let's turn it by hand anyway, so it really looks nice. So what you want to do is put some lubricant on those gear teeth. Because they're not going to get any oil on them until the whole motor is lubricated and it's returning oil. So we want to make sure we get some lube on those teeth before that. So we just take that and rub them on the teeth a little bit as we rotate them. And that all will lubricate the whole thing when you do that. And you see the, that gear is lubricated. And that's going to lubricate the one down there too. See the oil down there now? So now it's lubricated with bones. Okay, that works good. Alright. So, here is his bowls. I don't know if we're supposed to put new ones in here or not, so... That one has a little bit of dirt or something on there, so we're going to put new balls in it. So we've got to find some balls. Anybody got any balls? I need two balls. I don't think I have my ball container around here today. Oh, no, I was wrong. Three ace balls. I got two in this bag. Let's use this bag at first. There's some new balls. It's always best to have new balls so they have a better chance of sealing. You had a little line on that one as a mark that would leak if that was on the across the seal surface. Okay, we only need two of these. So one, two. Okay, what I always do is I put oil in here. Kind of like pre lubes it a little bit. And then I drop my ball down the hole. And there should be a spring around here somewhere. Here's the one spring. That's not the one I want though. There's the other one. Here's the light spring. One light one, one heavy one. Now if you stretch these, it puts more pressure in the balls than leak, but then it also doesn't suck as good either. So I don't know if you want to be doing that. Okay, this is the pressure one here. You can stretch that way out and then it won't probably get any oil pressure. You guys kind of leave them alone. Okay, where is our upper nut? Okay, so you got a rounded nut. Uh, and you got a flat one. The flat one usually goes on top. Rounded one's more aerodynamic, so it goes out there in the wind on the side. Aerodynamics are important in a Harley. They need all the help they can get. It also makes it look better too, but yeah, it's for aerodynamics. You know, looks. Impact knocker again. Use my big bit. Big bit doesn't tear up your hardware like small bit does. See, nice big fit fills in the gap. So one, two. That's good enough. That one's done. Go up here. We're down here dumping oil out of everything, so we should put this on. Put my magic goop from Home Depot. Teflon paste. Takes about that much. Now this stuff's kind of stringy, it's not like the real good stuff. But put a little bit of that on there, I don't need a lot. Just enough to cover it a little bit. Keep it off the inside with the threads, or you don't want it in there. 
And that goes on the bottom down here. Now if you tighten up too much, you split it wide open, so be careful. Don't get carried away. And they don't really give you room for a socket in here either, which is kind of stupid. Size that, 11 16 Grab the 5 a like you're supposed to, dumbass. So, this hex is hitting on the pump body. It's hitting down here as you rotate it. See it's hitting on that? So this is not the correct fitting. Well, you were supposed to put this on there before you uh, put the damn pump on together. That's kind of stupid. Now, later on, they made a taller one. It was taller up, but so that's going to be a problem. Well, I don't want to jam that every time because when I do, it's going to try to break this pump off. So what I'm going to do is either put a taller one on there, which I don't have, or I'm going to turn the this down a little bit, which is what I will do, so I'm not tearing it all up. Or I got to go in there and hit a grinder and put a little divot in there, right there, where that mark is, right there. You make a permanent repair. I kind of like doing the grinding part. So for now, I'm just going to leave that in there like that, so I don't forget it. And I'll have to plug that hole up with some paper before I uh, grind next to that hole, because that is our feed line for the oil pump. Got to remember to do that. I think I remember just put the plug in the other crank in here. And you can see I bet he didn't forget that. See, it's already in there. Don't forget to put those plugs in there before you put your motor together. You will have uh, no oil pressure if you don't do that. Okay, we got our little screw right here with a couple of shims in here. Yeah, we had some shims in there. So the thick washer goes first. And you got the little shim washer goes in there like that. That controls how much oil goes in the in the oil breather. Lubricate your primary chain with. So this one here, we just got a belt drive, so we don't have an oiler over there. So we don't need this one. So if you remember, we plugged the hole up on the inside of the pump. So this is pretty much for show over here, but it will leak oil out of it. Maybe depends if we shut off which side we shut it off on. Okay, now we got our pressure pump side. Once again, put a little oil in the hole there, just for the hell of it. Make sure you lubricate the side of the body so there's oil in there. So when you drop this in, it gets lubed as it goes down. The spring goes in. See, I don't get no lube on my fingers. Sink it in. Oh, this is a different model. This one has a pressure, adjustable pressure relief valve. That's what this is. Almost forgot about that. It's not a late model bike, it's an early bike. Things are adjustable. You can adjust your oil pressure. Whatever you think you need. Factory adjustments three eighths of an inch down. Yeah, about that far. We're in accuracy around here, so we're at 308, 5 sixteenths. Get a little extra. 363. Three seventy-eight. Three thou too much. Damn. I could back it up or just leave. I'm gonna leave it. I think three thousand is close enough. You put the aerodynamic nut on the outside. That 
don't hit against your crankshaft like this. It's not good for the motor over there. Just go over like this. Kind of hold the other arm over there. Too pop for that. It's tight. Okay, the oil pump is now in there. I don't have the pressure. Oh, I do have the pressure. Okay, so. Now, here's a problem. This pump is made to have a 3 8 straight thread with a gasket on it. Pressure relief. Not really, pressure uh, switch. This 8 inch pipe thread. Now, have they ever already screwed up this oil pump by jamming this 8th inch pipe thread into this one already? Or are they just thinking they're going to put this in here right now? Okay, right now it doesn't want to go, so I'm happy with that. That means it might not fit. So, what we got to do is we need a 3 8 fine thread bolt. Now, I'm not sure we can get one of those around here, but maybe uh, over here in the motor mount bolt section. Oh, look what I found, a 3 8 bolt. Appears to be fitting really nice like it's supposed to. The thread's not all V'd out. See, that's a nice tight fit. So that's what's supposed to be in there. See, it's nice and tight all the way up. So this oil pump has not been screwed up yet. You also want to make sure it's perpendicular to the gasket surface of the seal. That's another indication it's screwed up. Okay, so this has not been screwed up yet. So, don't go being a dumbass and jam a tapered pipe thread into a straight thread and think you're going to be good. Now, that's 24 threads per inch. This is 27 threads per inch. It's not the same thread either. So, he needs to get the correct switch for this bike, not this one. So, we're going to leave that open for him so he'll know. So, when you have these problems, don't, don't do stupid stuff. Okay, so that has to be left open. Now, this here we had to undo because we had to get some room over here for the oil pump. This is our breather for our belt drive, our chain drive. So, and that's what this thing here does, puts oil in the system. So right now this is just breathing fluid. Your engine breather blows right inside your primary. So, usually what I do on these is, I used to just cut these off and put a tube right here, and you have a hose on it, rotate this down like this, you know, grind a little notch in here so it can work on the pin. Tube goes straight down and you run around the back of the bike on the right side over here, away from the chain. So, but the last couple I did, I took this with a torch, I heated it up, I took a big bolt, you know, something like one of these, jammed it in there, heat this up with a torch and just rotate it around until it's straight. Then you have that much length to play with. Cut off what you don't want and you're good to go. There's a 3 8 bolt. Thing like that. Just that thing just comes around, you put a little heat on it, just pulls right around nice and straight. And if you want, you shove the bolt up in there and make the tube round again if you screw it up. Worked pretty good. So this bike here, I'm going to leave it stock. Let him worry about how he's going to do his own bike. So we have to tighten this nut up so we don't forget to do that. Like I said, nine times out of ten, you do have to loosen that up to get the oil pump in and out. Okay, that one's in there tight. So now that's in there where it belongs. So it's all good to go. Alright, so next thing I'm going to do is notch that pump out. I'll do that tomorrow. Make sure I'll tell him that he needs to have the correct pressure relief valve in there. Probably what I'm going to do, I'm going to go upstairs and see if I have one. And just put one in there so you don't have to worry about it. Less chance of him screwing it up. You can have the crank slides back and forth like it's supposed to. Okay, so the gear is in there. And it looks like it's rotating correctly. Yep, looks good. We got our seal on the bearing in here. We didn't forget to put that in there. That's a big plus. All right, so we should be able to put the cam cover in tomorrow and finish this thing up. I'm not doing the top end. I'm only doing the bottom end here. And I don't have lifters, so I don't have that either. We'll just get all these gears and stuff in there. 
this is the big bigaboo. The big bugaboo is getting this side out, uh, tweaking the crank. We'll deal with that tomorrow. All right, that's it for tonight on that one.